There are many definitions we should think about related to nanoparticles. Several documents and websites have especially relevant definitions. These include ASTM standard E2456-06, standard terminology relating to nanotechnology from 2012, ISO standard 27687 on nanotechnology terminology and definitions from 2008, a National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, or NIOSH, publication from 2009 titled Approaches to Safe Nanotechnology, and the website of the National Nanotechnology Initiative, or NNI, nano.gov. As nanotechnology is still an emerging field, we should expect that our definitions will continue to evolve to some extent into the future. Looking at some of the definitions we have already, a definition for nanotechnology from the NNI is that it is the understanding and control of matter at the nanoscale at dimensions between approximately 1 and 100 nanometers, where unique phenomena enable novel applications. So that seems like a pretty simple definition that gets us into the 1 to 100 nanometer range, which is the same range covered by Prining's definition of ultrafine particles. Unfortunately, there is no one agreed upon definition for nanotechnology. A second definition that comes from the ASTM standard is that nanotechnology is a term referring to a wide range of technologies that measure, manipulate, or incorporate materials and or features with at least one dimension between approximately 1 and 100 nanometers. Such applications exploit the properties, distinct from bulk macroscopic systems, of nanoscale components. Here again, this definition indicates that nanotechnology deals with stuff, using Smalley's word again, in the range of 1 to 100 nanometers, in at least one of the three dimensions. However, this definition is more precise, and you have to read it carefully. It is a little more restrictive than the one from the NNI, because it specifically says that nanotechnology applications exploit properties of materials that are different at the nanoscale than on the macroscopic scale. So, to reiterate, there is no single definition for nanotechnology. The ISO standard defines a nano object as a material with one, two, or three external dimensions in the size range from approximately 1 to 100 nanometers. The standard goes further to define a nano plate as a nano object with one external dimension at the nanoscale. We can think of this as being like a wafer or a flake, something very thin in one dimension but wide and flat in the other two dimensions. A nanofiber is a nano object with two external dimensions at the nanoscale, with nanotubes referring to hollow nanofibers and nanorods referring to solid nanofibers. So nanofibers are long in one dimension while being very thin in the other two dimensions. Nanoparticles, and this is just the definition from the ISO standard, are nano objects with three external dimensions at the nanoscale. This definition for nanoparticles makes them look a lot like ultrafine particles as defined by Prining. We're certainly running through a lot of definitions. Maybe it's starting to fluster us a little bit, but we're not done yet. The ASTM standard gives us an additional definition for nanoparticle, saying that in nanotechnology, it is a subclassification of ultrafine particle with lengths in two or three dimensions greater than 0.001 micrometer or 1 nanometer and smaller than about 0.1 micrometer or 100 nanometers, and which may or may not exhibit a size-related intensive property. So this definition talks about nanoparticles as a subclassification of ultrafine particles. This definition makes us think some more because the previous definition indicated that nanoparticles were between 1 and 100 nanometers in all three dimensions, whereas this one says nanoparticles are those with two or three dimensions between 1 and 100 nanometers. So this definition includes the nanofibers, the nanotubes and nanorods, from the previous definition as nanoparticles. We're still not done with our definitions. NIOSH defines a nanomaterial as a larger matrix or substrate into which nano objects are incorporated. 
A nanoaerosol refers to nano objects suspended in a gas. A nanohydrosol would be nano objects suspended in a liquid. Sometimes this is also referred to as a colloid. Nanocomposites are nano objects embedded in a matrix. Some plastics are now nanocomposites, with nano objects being used to provide strength to polymers. Like me, you're probably getting tired of all these definitions, but we're still not done with them. Many people call everything that's smaller than about 100 nanometers a nanomaterial. For instance, some people refer to all ultrafine particles, all particles 100 nanometers and smaller, as nanoparticles. However, this is in conflict with the definitions we've seen that indicate that nanomaterials utilize the special properties of nanoobjects that arise because of their size. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, has offered some definitions to distinguish among different kinds of nanomaterials for those who wish to call everything at the nanoscale a nanomaterial. The EPA suggests that naturally occurring nanomaterials are formed and released into the environment as a result of natural processes such as weathering, erosion, and volcanic eruptions. They consider incidental nanomaterials to include materials that are produced as a byproduct of an intentional anthropogenic process such as industrial processing, laboratory procedures, and combustion. So, for example, many particles produced by smoking tobacco or burning wood in fireplaces would be incidental nanomaterials. EPA uses engineered nanomaterials, which has become a very common term, to describe a wide range of compounds that are intentionally manufactured in a research or commercial setting. They are designed to exhibit specific properties and maintain uniform structures so that they can be used in a wide range of advanced applications. So, engineered nanomaterials are what most of us think about when we think about nanotechnology, materials that are intentionally manipulated for a purpose. However, you should keep in mind that natural materials and byproducts of what people do are sometimes referred to as nanomaterials, especially when we talk about nanoparticles.